to tonight's webinar. Tonight is for newly appointed JPs or those who are waiting to be appointed. And um, what we're going to do is go through uh, the QJA website and some of the member resources that you have available. And um, we'll have an opportunity for you to ask some questions uh, because it, it is a webinar, so you won't see yourself on camera and um, you won't be able to, um, I think you can, I think, you can raise your hand, um, but we've got um, chat and then there's Q&A. So if you have questions, if you could put them in the Q&A rather than in chat, because they can get lost in there. Um, chat is sort of more for you can, miss, you know, chat to other people on the webinar or um, just sort of make general comments. But if you've got questions, definitely put them in the Q&A as we go. Um, my name is Wendy Lamarckery and I'm the Business Manager and Registrar of QJA. And um, I've been a JP since 2002 and um, I've been with QJA since 2014, so quite some time. And I've seen quite a few changes in that period. There's been a lot of changes to what JPs do. Um, I, when I started this job, I kind of thought, this sounds like a good job, you know, heading towards retirement. You know, JPs don't do very much, but it's not like that at all. And, you know, I've had people say to me, oh, you know, but JPs are becoming extinct, aren't they? You know, everything's going online or, you know, I've, and I haven't seen that at all. There's no evidence of that happening, uh, even though we're seeing more and more, um, you know, digital stuff coming on. There's still a, you know, there's still a very important role for JPs and the role that we play in um, you know, key things in people's lives, I guess, is uh, what keeps uh, me interested and what makes what we do so valuable because, you know, someone's buying a house or uh, trying to get into university or uh, trying to register a relationship or have a civil partnership recognised or registering the birth of a baby, you know, doing an endurance power of attorney or doing their will or in some cases opting for voluntary assisted dying, a JP is usually there witnessing a document. And that's just the everyday stuff. I mean, there's all the judicial stuff that we do. There's stuff that we do for the police, like search and arrest warrants. You know, um, I've done a few of those in my time. Uh, and, you know, there's other judicial duties that we do. And a lot of our members, some of our members go to records of interviews. Some of our members uh, attend the airport and assist border force when they need to search someone. And, um, you know, some, some of our members do search warrants for the RSPCA as well. So there's lots of important stuff we do. So um, but before we really get into proceedings tonight, I'd like to uh, acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the land from where we're joining this meeting tonight, which could be all over Queensland, um, their elders past, present and emerging and that's an important statement for me. I know that there's been a bit in the press lately about how that's just blah, 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 blah. doesn't really mean anything. For me, it does mean something. My husband is Indigenous. He's a Gumbanya man. And so my children are Indigenous also. And so acknowledging country is uh, important personally to me. So I do have, there, there is meaning in that acknowledgement for me. So, um, so I do it, uh, despite what... Um, some commentary would suggest. So, <clears throat> uh, like I said, this is a webinar and we are recording. So um, put your questions in the Q&A. Please put them in there as we go. Um, we'll probably have some time at the end for maybe, you know, talk about some stuff because, you know, you're like I said, you're, you're either, you know, just become a JP or you're waiting to be appointed or you haven't put your application in. So there's um, some important updates on that as well. Um, and perhaps, well, actually, before I look at the website, I might actually talk about that. So there has been a change to the Justice of the Peace Act uh, that was assented in September 2023. Um, and will take effect when it comes into proclamation. And I think they're calling the 1st of April for April Fool's Day for some reason, um, is when the changes will come into effect. 
So how that, um, the, key, the key elements of those changes are that the code of conduct, which you probably learned about when you were doing your course, is now going to be captured within the Justice of the Peace Act. So it's now going to become law. Uh, and uh, there's been changes to um, there's been changes to revocation of appointment. So now there's there's more kind of powers, if you like, for the Department of Justice and Attorney General to recommend that someone's appointment be revoked. Um, it the current like prior to the, this change. Your appointment could be revoked, you know, if you became ineligible. So, if you were convicted of a of a criminal offence, um, you could become find yourself ineligible and therefore have your appointment revoked by the department rather than you resigning. So, some of the some of the changes are around um, more visibility for the Department of Justice and Attorney General. So, if someone has um, I think if there's a guilty plea, uh, I think that will get kind of highlighted to um, the JP branch, and um, they'll be kind of they'll they'll have more access to sort of monitor um, court records, um, you know, because the the system at the moment is kind of it kind of relies on honesty. But, um, you know, so if a JP becomes ineligible, it kind of relies on the fact that they'll be honest enough to say that they're ineligible, whereas the changes are going to give the department um, more proactive, they'll, they'll be more proactive. And there's going to be a whole process for that to happen. You know, there'll be a show cause and all kinds of stuff uh, going in there. So that's the other key change. And um, another change which is relevant, perhaps relevant to you, is that the previously there was a disqualification if you had more than two traffic offences in four years. Um, they've actually removed that in the new legislation. So uh, recognising that a speeding fine doesn't make someone necessarily a criminal and therefore in, in eligible to be a JP, um, they've removed the disqualification. So if you happen to be holding on to... Um, your statement of attainment and you haven't actually applied yet because you're waiting to sit out, um, you know, that that four-year thing, um, do it in do it in sometime in April because that's when these changes are going to come into effect. <laughs> so you're not going to necessarily have to wait, you know, until they tick over, um, you know, because they should be be introducing those procedures and that, that act will be proclaimed sometime. They're, so, they're still saying April um, when those changes will be. I think it's a good, I think it's a good change that's been introduced. So that may be relevant to uh, to some of you. Um, that um, and I think it's I think it's they're also going to be looking at other licenses as well. If someone say has had a gun license revoked or something like that, then you know, that I think could make people, <laughs> could be relevant in the application because it could be a reason for it. Uh, so, but, you know, definitely the driving thing, they're kind of, they've kind of taken that away. You can still be um, ineligible if you're a bankrupt or um, you've been convicted. But I think, again, I think it depends on a guilty, um, a guilty uh, view. Robert, hang on, Robert, uh, you've raised your hand. Just hang on a second. Just give me a sec. And just trying to find you, sorry. Uh, ah, there we go. Robert. Okay, Robert, I've just clicked it on so you can talk. I don't know whether that's working. Oh, or sorry, not. Wendy. I must have hit the wrong button. Oh, <laughs> okay. You got really excited about that. So you raised yeah. your hand. Awesome. Operator, um, okay. operator error. Oh, okay. Yes, I know what that is like. Um, yeah, okay. No problem. <laughs> All righty. Um, 
Okay, just reading the chat. Um, Christopher Jones says he's happy about that on 21, so currently haunted by two speeding tickets. Yeah, it's a, it's a young person thing, isn't it? But anyway, uh, from when you were 17 or 18. Exactly. And that that's kind of part of the reason why they, chat the, you know, the justification for removing that disqualification was, that, you know, we all do young, stupid things when we're young. And, um, you know, it's like <laughs> they kind of, it doesn't make you a bad person. So, uh, yeah, so it'll be, it'll be uh, removed. Uh you know, for you. So you'll be right to apply if you haven't done so already. But, you know, if you're on that borderline, you might want to wait till, um, you know, just after April. Remember that your statement of attainment is is good for two years. So, um, you know, so you, you, you could be fine. All right. <clears throat> okay. Like I said, any questions, pop them in the Q&A as we go. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and visit our website. Now, I don't know how many of you um, engage with, you know, engage with our website, but one of the things that you need to remember is that if you're, if you did the course with us, then um, you get, uh, you get like this complimentary membership for 12 months from when you've passed your course, from the date of your statement of attainment. And that entitles you to access all of the stuff that full members can access um, and a couple of other things that I'll tell you about as we visit the website. Uh, if you are newly appointed, that still applies to you. Remember, it's, 12, it's a free 12 months from the date of your statement of, of appoint, uh, statement of attainment, sorry. Um, and then from there on in, we put you on a full membership. Don't be con too concerned. Our membership's pretty modest at um, $85 a year. So it puts it way below what normal professional associations would charge. I know I'm in a couple of them, they charge a fortune. So, um, all right, so I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so this is the website before you log in. So before you log in, when you just when the public, when anybody visits the website, this is what they see. Um, and you've got you've got like I said, we've put a, a section in here that's called JP information. It's kind of for people that are already appointed because we were getting a lot of inquiries uh, from people about you know how do I replace my seal of office. How do I get a photo ID card? I need to change my address or I've just got married, so I need to change my name. So we put all of that, that stuff in, um, in, in the public-facing website. You don't need to log in to access that. And a lot of these are links that will take you to um, the Justice of the Peace branch uh, web pages where you can do things like changing your address. Remember that you need to change your address with us too. So all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign in. So the sign in button is up here. Uh, in between the shopping cart symbol and the and the search bar, so I'm going to sign in, and sorry, I'm going to try and remember my password. And hang on a minute. <clears throat> All right, so once I sign in, what magically appears is the members area. So that's of course you need to have you need to have an account uh, with QJA and you need to be you need to be a member for that to come up. So um, and once you're there, this is this is what you kind of have available to you. So study right from the top, there's a thing called my account, and this is where you can go in and just close your eyes for a sec because you're going to see my day of birth and crap like that. Um, so this is where you can uh, change your address, uh, change your phone number, change your email address, put your, you know, um, your uh, social profiles if you want to do that. And um, also in here, you've got, you can renew or pay invoices. So um, that's, that's on, the, on the first page. On the second page, we've got a page called My Participation. Uh, it's just got, hello, it's just the circles going around. There we go. Um, as you can see, I'm very engaged with the organisation. I'm 99%. I haven't made it to 100% because I don't think that's even possible. But um, there you go. Uh, and here you'll see if there's any invoices that you need to pay. Um, we also have a number of online communities that are set up. So it shows me what communities I'm part of. 
and um, what my current membership fees are. Um, here I'm, I'm set up for automatic renewal so that I don't have to think about it. It's just when my membership's due, it'll get, it'll get processed um, by the association. And um, I can see recent transactions and stuff like that. So that's, um, that's in there. In the My Preferences page is where you can reset your password. And also you can tell us what communications you want to receive. So um, I know myself, it's like you get kind of email overload. Uh, you know, I, it's like every now and then I go into, I like, have so much crap that comes through on Gmail, it's not funny. Um, but you've got to go in and every now and then and unsubscribe for some reason for some organisations that doesn't real, work real well. So, you know, rather than inundate you with uh, emails and information that you're not interested in, this is where you can tell us um, what information you want to receive. And you can unsubscribe to all of them. It, it doesn't mean, though, that you can unsubscribe to receiving your renewal notice because we will still email that to you um, regardless of... Um, what your references is for the other stuff. Um, here you can change your password and down here you can um, you can indicate whether you want to be in in the find a JP uh, listing. That is different to the uh, JP branch after hours listing which you if you're already appointed you may be familiar with where members of the public can contact you. Um, we found that there were too many issues with it. It's like we were getting a lot of phone calls from people or, you know, somebody contacted you after hours and said, oh, look, you're the 40th JP I've contacted because there's a lot of kind of people on that after hours register that aren't, aren't willing to see people on weekends or in the evenings. And so they shouldn't really be there. Um, so we've got our own listing. Ours is a little bit different, and I'll look. I'll, I'll show you what that looks like a little bit later. But it's in here where you can say whether you want to be listed or not. So, um, and on the my listing page is the information that you can put in your listing. So this is where we can say yes, I'm going to be shown in the in the public directory. Here's my email address. Yes, show my email address. I'm happy to get emails from people. And these are the kind of documents that I'm, I'm happy to witness, um, you know, because not everyone is comfortable with all the documents that you need to witness. And so some people, you know, might not want to do search warrants or, um, you know, may not want to do powers of attorney, for example. So because they can be, you know, those kind of problematic ones. Um, and I can put in here notes about, you know, uh, any notes that you want in here. I'm saying, please call ahead because there's a dog on the premises. If you um, if you don't call ahead, you don't tell me when you're going to arrive. I can't guarantee you'll keep all of your limbs. So um, if you call me, though, and you let me know that you're going to be there in 20 minutes, I can put the dog in the laundry and you'll be safe. So uh, that's what that listing is about. So our, our listing is different to the department's listing because we have extra information in there. Um, and of course my address is in there too, but that's not on the listing. The only thing that appears on the listing, and I'll show you what that looks like, is what you want to show. It doesn't show your address. It will, it will show your mobile phone number and it will show your email. And you don't have to be in it. You can opt out. Actually, it's an opt-in thing. So we don't put you in there automatically. Um, and on the My Professional Development page, this is where I can see what PD I've done. And because I haven't done any pre-appointment learning for quite some time, um, but I've done some online stuff and hopefully that will come up. Uh, there we go. And so that's showing me what courses I've done online. And remember, this is not my, this is not my um, staff account. This is my personal account. So these are the courses that I've done uh, with QJA. So that's where we keep all of that stuff. All right. So that's the My Account page. And then what we've got here, which is probably useful for you guys, is we've got these things called member toolboxes. So what we've done here is create um, web pages for particular topics because it was it was kind of one of those things. That it was actually out of a personal interest, to be honest. Um, you know, it's if I had someone say, uh, 
say contact me and uh, they want me to witness an affidavit hadn't done one for a while and can't rem quite remember how you do it I could go into a toolbox topic before they arrive or even while they're there um, and I can go and find everything out about affidavits on this page so we've got the uh, inexia certificate so I hope you still remember what they are but that's where you have uh, an attachment or an actual that's part of an affidavit and the certificates uh, need to go in front of the annexures. So, or rather than you can actually write, uh, well, if it's a document, you can probably put on the document, but a lot of cases of clients don't like you touch their original documents. So you can use the certificates in here. Really useful is the multiple page one, uh, the multiple annexure one, sorry. Um, and we've got a little cheat sheet on oaths and affirmations. So the, what the wording is for the different oaths and affirmations, you can download a, a cheat sheet on this page as well. And we've put the steps in here. We've put the department handbook chapter relevant to affidavits and the chapters of the QJA guide. And we've also got some role play videos that you can watch. So there's kind of everything in here that you need. The other thing that we've got is we've got single topic courses. And these are all free. So, um, you know, if you want to, if you want to uh, refresh your knowledge on a particular area of practice, you can just go and do a little, you can just redo that, that part of the course. So you can just redo the affidavits bit. Um, and it's not, it's not actually assessed. So, but you, you can still do like the practice documents. You'll still get the solutions. You've got role play videos in there. You've got quizzes and that kind of thing. Um, you can, you can, and it just kind of keeps you up to date. And uh, I guess the good news for you guys is that we're actually in the process of updating a lot of this content too. So um, we're updating the statutory declarations in particular because they changed the form on us. So um, we're doing that at the moment. And when we update that, what, what will be in here will be the latest ones. Uh, so that's what is in there. So you'll find similar pages for uh, enduring documents, wills, warrants, um, land titles, summons, which I'm a bit, a bit if not totally rusty on, and um, bail, which I've never done. Um, so if I was called to do that, that this, this is what I do, log in, what's the thing about bail? Um, you know, is there a checklist? Is there, you know, I, I would go and have a look at that. So that's what the member toolbox is for. So it's for you to be able to find everything that you need on those particular areas of practice. So, um, and we did actually win an award for that, believe it or not. It was a random thing I did one afternoon and I won an award for it. So uh, it's, been, it's been very useful. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's gone down well. All right, so that's your toolboxes. So you have that too. All of this is included in your membership. All right, so... Um, and of course, we've got the QJA learning. If you did your course online, you would be familiar with this. This is our online learning platform. This is where it is. Uh, and this is how you access it. Sign on to the website, go to the members area, QJA learning, and that will come your learning platform account. And that's where it is. Um, and along the, before we get into the e-log book, which is a bit it, there's a bit to that. Uh, we've also got some quick guides, which are kind of similar. So a quick guide, let's go to have a look. So, you know, we might have a, an AHG quick guide. And basically what that is, if it's going to play, it's not going to play on there, no. There we go. Uh, it's just a quick checklist, essentially, that you can access. And I think it's been, this page has been designed to work particularly well on mobile phones. So, you know, if you happen to have your client there and they want an AHD and you can't remember how to do it, go here um, because this will give you the steps that you've got to follow. All right. Let's go back. That was our quick guides. And again, that's all under the members area. Uh, we've got publications in here. We have... Uh, this is where you can download PDFs of um, the uh, QJA guide, um, that oaths and affirmation sheet. Uh, there's also a booklet. There's update updates to chapters. They're a little bit long in the teeth now, so you probably already have those. 
and there's a, a link to the quarterly magazine as well, which will take you to a to a page. So have a look at that. You can just see me um come up in a second with my mouth open probably. Um anyway, we'll get out of that. It's just kind of introducing the magazine, so we won't go there. Don't worry about that. All right. Now, like I said, in here, there's a free will service. This is part of your Okay. So hang on. I'm just gonna try and try and turn that off just one minute. There we go. Hang on a sec. I will just there we go. It kind of annoyingly plays um without you wanting it to play. So all right, back to the website. There we go. All right, so um, as part of your membership, now whether you're uh, um, an appointed JP already or whether you're still waiting to be appointed or you haven't applied yet, um, you're still considered a member. And so as a member, you have access to a free will service uh, provided by Hall Payne Lawyers. Uh, it's an online will, and uh, basically what it does is you use a promo code at the end and um, what it does is step you through questions to actually draft your will for you. And when you're done, you'll have the document emailed to you and you can print it off and go and have it witnessed. And it works really, really well. I've done my will this way. Um, if you need to, um, oh, and it's it, it's for your, um, for your partners or spouse as well, you get a free online will. And um, if you need a legal consultation, they will provide a free initial consultation and then a discount on any services after that. And that all comes with your membership. Um, they do charge for an, a power of attorney. I'm not sure why, because I don't think they're a complicated document, but they you can have one done if you're more comfortable having a solicitor done. They will do that for you as well, but you'll, um, you'll pay... A pretty low cost for it. I believe that it could be upwards of about three hundred dollars to have a solicitor prepare an injury and power of attorney, but they'll do do it for one hundred and ten. They say so. It quite be if they don't. If you happen to go down that road. Um, all right. So in here we have a, a number of other things. So the you know a listing of our branches and groups, a uh, bit about the QJA awards, uh, the communities which I mentioned before and um, some other like AGMs and board, board election type stuff. So now, importantly, the e-logbook. All right. Oh, damn, I need another password. Just hang on a second. It's going to have to find it. Wait a minute. They have about 6,000 passwords, so all right. Yeah, it's in the way of where I put my password. Go. Okay. All right. Now I'm an administrator, so you're if you're in the logbook, your screen's got to look slightly different. So um the e logbook is exclusive to QJA and QJA members. And basically what it is, so you would have learnt about having a logbook when you did your course um, and the importance of, you know, keeping logbook records, even though it's not mandatory for you to do so, it is recommended that you keep a logbook record. Uh, it is mandatory for land titles uh, transactions that you witness, so you have to keep those records for seven years anyway. So... Um, I tend to think of, you know, a logbook is just something that you have to do. Uh, I don't know how people kind of cope without doing a, doing a logbook. But, um, yeah, it's, like I said, not mandatory, but we very strongly recommend it. And if you're witnessing land titles documents, then you have to have a logbook. So we have developed um, this web platform database, uh, which is uh, effectively a... Uh, online version of a logbook. 
Um, different to the paper logbook in that it will actually step you through what you need to record for the different types of documents. That's the first thing it does. The second thing it does is it allows you to search the entries. Um, as you get, uh, you know, as you get further down your um, JP uh, journey, you'll find that you, you know, if you if you diligently keeping the logbooks, they can get quite big, and there can be a lot of entries in there. And if you happen to have if you happen to have a need to go and look at your logbook to find, um, you know, a witnessing activity that you did, you're going to have to search right through that paper logbook to find it. What this, what the e-logbook does is it you know, actually allows you to search. So, um, and I'll show you where that is. Uh, okay. Detailed list. All right. So over here, I'm going to search for this troublesome client of mine called Molly the dog. So let's go have a look what we've done. Oh, there we go. There's all the witnessing we've done for Molly the dog. All right. Okay. So um, see what I mean? I've searched by the client name. So I can find those records in there. So if I wanted to see what I actually did for Molly the dog, uh, let's say, um, well, this is an enduring power of attorney, for example. So let's say there was a QCAT hearing and they wanted to know um, about when I witnessed Molly the dog's enduring power of attorney and how did I know that she had capacity? Well, she can't speak and she can't feed herself. But anyway, um, she has capacity. All right, so what I'm going to do is look for the uh, what I did was go into details and I can sort of find that I did a capacity check and I did a capacity check form and somewhere I'm able to find that, but I'm not exactly sure where. Hang on. There we go. Um, yeah, okay, so I've got a detailed. Here's, here's the Molly the dog's capacity check. Um, so let's just go and have a look at that. Okay. Um, and of course, when we did your training, uh, we said that you shouldn't ask open ended, you know, the sort of questions where people can go yes or no. Now, clearly, I've res Molly has responded with yes to a lot of these questions. Um, okay. And these are, these are the notes from the logbook. You know, does the client understand when the power begins? Yes, she does. Um, but she understands that the attorney will have full control over matters to which the EPA relates. So this is a financial and personal health matters. Yes, etc. So, it, you know, if I was questioned, I could say, yes, I did a capacity check for Molly the dog. And um, my assessment was that she had capacity. So uh, let's have a look at that again. Yeah. So I've asked question one three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So in the capacity checklist. So I don't know whether I'm going to edit. There we go. No. That's just a yes, no. Anyway, it keeps that capacity checklist full in there. So um, you're able to find that kind of historical data. The other, the other advantage I've found is that with things like, say, a search warrant because you get to keep the application. I have a collection of them in the office that students get to look at. You can actually upload those into the e logbook, so you can find the, the application, the actual application for the search warrant if you're looking through or having to look back at um, your witnessing or your issuing of a search warrant, you can find it in here. Um, so let's uh, let's have a look at what an entry might look like. So in your wrong pillar, here comes Molly the dog again. She's a bit of a nuisance client, this one. Um, okay, so she's going to show me her driver's license and she wants a certified copy of her council defects certificate or something like that. Okay, so I'm going to say she wants two copies of that. 
and I'm going to go save. That's all I need to do. That's all you would do for your logbook record, right? The client, what type of ID and how many copies, what it was. So it was certified copies. How many copies? There were two. And that was my logbook record. So if I have a look at my daily summary, um, it's going to, no, oh, there we go. You can see that record in here. So it kind of looks like, um, it kind of looks like a logbook entry would. Um, if I wanted to do something like, and that's a fairly simple one. So if we wanted to do a statutory declaration, um, and we'll be Sunny Bank Hills. That's Molly the dog again. I was kind of grateful that these records are not actually used in any official capacity at the moment because uh, there'll be a lot of Molly the dogs in there. So, all right. So, uh, see how I went from certified copies to statutory declaration? There's a drop down list. And what will appear following that will depend on what you've selected. And so it's now changed it to, because I changed it to stat deck, it's going to ask me what statutory declaration, what type of statutory declaration it is. And um, I'm going to say, and I don't think we have to do these 888 visa things anymore, by the way. Um, it's a, let's say it's a Queensland stat deck. All right. So Molly is in front of me. She's shown me her ID. I've confirmed that her, statutory declaration is in the correct format, that she is the declarant and um, there's no blank spaces, no crossouts, no corrections, all that kind of stuff. All right, now we're ready to witness that statutory declaration. So I'm going to give Molly the dog the warning, which might say, now, Molly, you understand that this is a legal document and if you make a false statement in here, you could be liable for prosecution under the law. Is everything in here true and correct? First, your knowledge and belief. To which you'll go, yep. Or you go woof, and uh, and then they would do the declaration. So you could, you'd then read out the declaration, and because Molly has some language difficulties I, and she can't read, I might read it to her, and she might repeat after me. So she's done the declaration, and I've witnessed her signature, and I don't need to take any notes. Um, you know, we might say DCC certificate of and they call it DSEC, no, or call it DSEC, mm -mm. something like that, because you get a discount on your dog registration. And uh, I'm going to save. And that's my logbook record done. Again, out of the daily summary or the logbook detailed list, sorry. And it will show me my logbook records for today. So, and there they are. The statistics will actually show you how many documents you've done. So I've seen two clients, even though they're the same client, and we've done two documents. So it's as simple as that. So that is the e-logbook. Um, if you uh, have been keeping or you will be keeping an e-logbook record and you're no longer going to be a QJA member, you can download your data. And in fact, Probably a good idea to do that every now and then anyway. And the way that you download it, uh, I think it was in the detailed list, is that we can export, there we go, we can export it. So it exports it as a CSV. So if you don't keep your membership current, we'll, we'll hang on to your data to give you a chance to download it. We don't delete data. All right. So um, the only thing we'd probably like, uh, we'd probably stop your access to it, but we don't actually delete the data. Um, if you want to add the e logbook access to your, it, it is a paid thing now that you add to your membership. It'll cost you a massive $2 a year. So um, I think it's worth it given that a logbook's $12.50. So um, I think there's a lot of functionality in the e logbook that's worth $2 a year, but it helps us to pay for the software licensing for the platform. Um, so, all right, let's just have a look. I'm going to have a look at Q&A. Okay, so Vicky is asking if uh, the toolbox that you have access to is specific to whether you're a JP Qual or a CDEC. Actually, no, because it's just too difficult. 
I mean, there's probably some complicated way of doing it. But if you happen to be a commissioner for declarations, you can go and find out about search warrants or bail applications. We leave it open to everyone. You can do those little online courses as well. So it's not not restricted to what your um, appointment of office actually is. So it's open to, to you all regardless. So um, it was, like I said, it was just going to be, going to be too difficult to um, do it any other way so it and you know I can't see why if you're the CDEC you can't have access to information you might find that interesting you can watch some of those role play videos that you didn't get to see when you did the training so um and the superb acting in them so, I joke all right so um okay so let's have a look at the chat Okay, so Lacey says that she's been using the e-log book since being appointed, very quick and easy to use. It is, isn't it? It's a, it's a great little product um, and uh, it's, I think, really, really useful. And it's kind of within, you know, it's in the now too because I think, that, look, I think the advantage is that, um, you know, particularly if you, you know, if you do, if you do say document witnessing at work but you also do it at home, you don't need to have two separate logbooks. You can just use the e-logbook and it's all in the one place. Um, some people keep a, they keep a paper record as well and then they update it. I'd, I'd fall into that category, although there is a bit of a lag sometimes. So um, because it's uh, it's kind of a backup because if you think about kind of the, the weather events that we've had recently with the, the kind of flooding and stuff like that, you know, people, have, if they were JPs, they could have lost their logbooks. They get... You know, they're not waterproof, the paper paper log books. You know, you could lose it. Um, you know, paper is uh, anything that's in, in a paper format like that is a bit vulnerable. So it's either, you know, it gets wet, it burns, insects eat it. In my case, I had, uh, i, I got to tell this joke, actually. I, um, I I don't know, you've probably heard of a book called Who Moved My Cheese? Um, and I had a copy of that book. Uh, well, actually... Actually, it was my former boss's book who gave it, he lent it to me to read uh, and I dutifully never returned it. And um, and when I left that job, I actually took the book with me and <laughs> had it in a box under my desk for quite some time. And we had we had some, some um, rodents. And after about three years, I thought, you know, I really should, I really should empty that box now. You know, it's sort of I should I should get us go through it. And I found it. I found the book, Who Moved My Cheese, and it had been eaten by the front cover. It had been chewed by rodents, and they actually chewed the picture of the cheese. But anyway, um, yeah, that's a just a little light something for tonight. So um, okay, so I'll stop sharing now. So has anyone got any other questions or anything you'd like to talk about or? Um, Okay, so let's just have a look. We do have a question that's come through. Um, yeah, Janet is asking if you if if kind of um, you find yourself in places that don't have an internet connection, um, you know, can you enter your daily information? Um, as recorded at the time, which would be in your paper log book and then put it, yeah, of course, you can put it in your e-log book later. Yeah, that's that's not a problem. What you might need to do, though, is um, you might just need to just change the date, I think. Don't worry too much about the time. I don't think that really, it's not really that relevant. Who records the time in the log book? But, um, yeah, you can do it. At, it, it you know, it, there's nothing to say, like, if, that's what I mean. Like some people keep a paper log book and then they keep the e log book as well for those kind of reasons. Um, there was a recent there was a recent change to the log book. So if you've got the log book open and you lose your internet connection or you lose your browser, you accidentally close your browser, when you um, when you go back into it, the data that you had previously was there. So I think it came up on the home page. It came up where it was saying something to that effect. Just hang on a sec. Ah, yeah, it, it kind of preserves the information so that it you don't lose it. Uh, and so there's this this button. I'm just going to share again, sorry. Just talking away without thinking. Yeah, there's this button over here called Clear Preserved Values. 
because it's going to, it's going to, it's going to record. Like if I shut this down and then go and open it again, Molly the dog stuff will be there. All right. It'll be on this. It'll be like still sitting in this form. So what you want to do is like clear, clear that so that it refreshes the form and makes it a blank form again. So that was a recent kind of feature that was added. Um, okay. All right. So that that sort of that sort of covers the um, uh, the website. Uh, that's the member resources and the members area for you. Um, you're possibly already familiar with um, the you know enrolling in the training courses. So they're on the menu here. That's on the public facing menu. Um, we've also got um, the events page. So this workshop which you probably registered for anyway, so you know about it. Um, you know, so we've got, you know, the events registration uh, workshops over here. Um, okay, so we've got the conference in there. So hang on a sec. Yeah, there we go. Um, now, because I am, oh, it signed me out. How rude. See how it's like, it's now the, oh, sorry, share my screen, wait a minute. Yeah, never mind. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of it's kind of signed me out. So for me to register, say for the conference, I would have to sign in again. So either down here or up here. And then what that does is it adds it to a shopping cart. It'll ask you some questions about dietary requirements and whether or not you want to go to the dinner and stuff like that. And then you kind of check out and you're registered for the event. So it's that simple. Um, same with the shop. You can just it's a shopping cart system, which I'm sure that you you're kind of familiar with. So all right. <clears throat> okay, so Yoti, is that how it's, I hope I'm pronouncing that correct? He's saying, do we have to write the information of stat deck in the logbook. Um, now, what you would what you would put in there? Uh, let's just go back to my logbook form. Let's see, that was it? Uh, what is sufficient? So let's have a look at uh, Molly the dog. <clears throat> okay. Now let's just bring let's bring up everything. Just hang on a sec. That's the wrong one. Let's come back. Um, oh, that was that was the edit page, wasn't it? Okay, so what you what the the record that you need to keep for a stat deck is as simple as the date, the place, client name, what ID you cited, what service they needed, and um, hopefully uh, in the notes bit, what you should indicate is that you warned them. They did the declaration, and you witness their signature because there'll be the three questions that get asked if it's ever if that stat deck has ever questioned. Did you warn the client? Let's say someone is up for a, a fraud, and they're, they're you know they've done a false declaration, and you're called in to um, give evidence or you're doing an affidavit. The question will be, did you warn the client? And if that's part of your regular process, whenever you did a stat deck and you've got this logbook record that says that you did, and you can say, yes, I warned the client. I, I always warn the clients. This is what I say, um, you know, because that sort of says, well, the client knew that it was a criminal offence and they did they did it anyway. So that's the three things you need to record in your logbook. If it's only when maybe you have a, odd situation or there's something extra that you want to note in your logbook that you would note it and you know there might be an odd situation might be um uh they were uh they didn't understand they didn't understand english and they did a stat deck anyway um okay maybe they were sight impaired and you might just want to make a note of that that they were sight impaired and so um, you know, you might make a note in that they were sight impaired. I read the I read the statutory declaration to them. They responded verbally. They made their mark on the declaration in the appropriate place. That that's a little bit of an unusual situation. So that's when you would do those notes in your little book, extra notes. But normally, just those three things. Uh, 
Uh, okay. Oh, the engagement score. Yeah. Um, ben, the engagement score is like it's it's kind of a uh, algorithm, I think is the word. There's a magical, mystical formula in the back of the member database that works all that out. It's, it's to do with um, things like purchasing stuff from the shop, registering for events, undertaking courses, um, you know, um, participating in an online community. It's it's all of that sort of stuff, but that's how the engagement score actually works. So mine's really high because I do a lot of testing. Um, I, although, like I said, I can't quite get to 100%. Maybe I should be. Uh, so that's where it, that's where it kind of comes from. It's like formulaic, if you like. Um, okay, so Silk Co says, do you bring your own laptop iPad when you perform JP work? If you're if you're using the e-logbook, yes, I, I I think trying to do it on a phone would be difficult. I would really, really struggle with a phone. Um, I would have a laptop or an iPad or something like that. Um, some you know, a lot of our even our older JP volunteers use a, a little iPad or a laptop and they use the e-logbook. So um, yeah, it would be your own if that's the case, if you're going to use it. Because remember, your logbook is your record. It's not the signing desk record. It's yours, all right? So you've got to keep your own personal logbook, all right? So, okay, and anonymous, I don't know who you are, but that's okay. Um, no, you don't need to renew your membership to participate in the JPs and the community program, all right? So this is coming from the person who runs the association. You don't need to renew your membership to be a JP. It's not dependent on that. Of course, we strongly recommend that you do because of the things that we've made available to you as a member, uh, the member resources that, that we've made available to you. And also we uh, engage in advocacy for JPs, for example. So, um, you know, we strongly recommend being a member of a professional association. If you if you are a professional yourself, you're probably a, a member of your professional association for the same kind of reasons, to be kept up to date, um, to have some representation, um, you know, in the in the industry. So because the JPs in the Community Program is a Queensland government program, and um, so they're not going to advocate against themselves for you. So that's what kind of we do. So, Ya Ting Wu says, I can offer the JP services in another language. That is absolutely brilliant. And um, what you can do, um, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, like I said, that's right. Uh, where are we? Okay. I'm going to have to sign in again. Just hang on a sec. Um, in the member directory listing, you can indicate what languages you can speak. I'm pretty sure that we have things like Mandarin in there. Um, hang on a minute. Got my password. Uh, uh, All right, I'm back. Awesome. Okay, so in the My Account page, in my listing, sure, in my listing. So this is the this is our um, JP listing, not the government's JP listing. In here, you can. Uh, using the power, I've clicked on the pencil to edit that. So you can see that we've got languages and special services here. So um, we've got Mandarin. Yeah. Uh, we're a bit, we were just kind of guessing. So, so if you have uh, another, another language that you'd like added, please send me an email. Add it to the list easy enough. But you can indicate it there. Um, you'll see that we've got. Auslan 
as well. And um, we've also got the option where people may be proficient in dealing with sight impaired people. Uh, so um, that can be, or, um, you know, their location, they have disabled access. So people might want to know that too, because that, that's all searchable on, um, on our directory. Um, so um, I hope that answers your question. You can indicate that. All right, so I've got a couple more questions. So no, I think we've answered that one. And um, we've answered that one, and that one, and that one. So yeah, they're all done. Awesome. OK, I think we've answered all the questions that were there. Uh, like I said, I am, uh, I have recorded this, this session. So um, if you've registered, I will send you uh, a link to that recording if you want to just have a have a view of that uh, in in your own time. Um, and for people that might have missed tonight's webinar, we'll send them, but they registered, we'll send them a recording as well. Uh, if you have, in the meantime, if you have any questions, any concerns or there's anything that you think that we can help you with, um, do contact either myself or Pamela, who's over there, and um, uh, by email or uh, call the office. Um, I think we've, I think Pamela advertises her mobile phone as well, uh, and we're more than happy to assist you. It's um, if you're a new JP or uh, you know you're waiting for appointment, then it's um, you know we don't mind if you call us six times a day, really, because. Um, you know, it's 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 a pretty important kind of job, and I think I think the other thing that happens, especially, you know, because the appointment can take quite some time. Like you do your course, and it could be twelve weeks before you get appointed, and so in twelve weeks' time, which is uh, three months, um, you could possibly have forgotten a lot of the stuff that you learnt during your course, and uh, it does happen. And uh, it would happen to me. It would happen to anybody. So you know, if you even if you think oh, I can't ask that, that's just silly. You know, um, don't don't think it's silly at all. You know, I've had questions like, I got my I got my stamps today, and uh, I need to certify a copy, but I can't remember what the wording is. So that happens. I've done it myself. I forgot the wording. I forgot the wording, so I bought a stamp. So. I don't have to think about what the wedding is anymore. So um, yeah, so so do that. You know, we we are here. To, that's what your membership is for. That's why you know the, there's an advantage to doing the training with us in that we don't just drop you when you get your statement of attainment. You know, for us, this is only the beginning of your journey, and um, you know we want to be with you for that for the rest of your journey as well. Um, you know, so. Um, Okay, so Karika is asking a question. Uh, will a client's forms be rejected if you maybe forgot to Z out a blank space or forgot to initial a page? Um, hard to say. Um, it depends on the receiving agency and that's an answer that you'll get a fair bit, um, particularly with things like certified copies. It depends on what that receiving agency is looking for. Um, it's yeah you can forget I think you know um, I've, I've done it even though I'm like been a JP for you know 20 something years I've had like clients come in and you know you're doing like multiple certified copies and and I've just I just thought of thought when once you like stamp that 20th copy you just go did I put my number on that and you ask the client for the copies back and you go yep you missed a couple you know it does happen so um yeah, I, I don't. It, it doesn't invalidate the the declaration if you haven't done those things, but the receiving agency might say, "Oh, hang on a sec, this doesn't look right," and it might be rejected that way. So it depends on them. It doesn't it doesn't invalidate what you've done. All right, it's important when you're doing statutory declarations that that the declarant signs and it's dated and you've signed and you've stamped and you've done and you know. That kind of stuff. You've put your name and uh, qualification on it. They're the important things, and um, the other important things, of course, with the stat deck is it's in the right format. 
So the right format is that it quotes an oath act somewhere, says it's a statutory declaration, and has something at the end of it that goes, yeah, I understand that this, you know, this has to be truthful, blah, 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 blah. And it has that that jurat bit at the end because you can get stat decks in lots of different forms. They can be in government forms. They can be in other forms. Uh, but they're what you're looking for, the jurat, uh, quoting the OAS Act and somewhere saying it's a declaration. So, um, yeah, because you can't, um, you know, even though there's a set form, Really, what you're looking for is the things that it has to have. Same with an affidavit, because they come in many different flavors. Um, all right. Okay, folks. So that sort of comes to the end of our session. Uh, I think we've, yeah, we've answered all of your questions. Like I said, if you if you kind of leave this session, you go, oh, I should have asked that. Um, send us an email, and um, uh, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, yeah, send us an email if you have questions. Um, if there's, you know, if there's something on the website that you're looking for, and and also, also send us an email if there's a suggestion that you have for other things that could be there or extra toolboxes that might be useful. Um, you know, because we're nothing that we do is kind of set in stone, and um, you know, we're there for for you guys, and you are the future of the uh, you know the JP community. So. You know, if you've got suggestions to make for us, do send them along and we're more than happy to, to accommodate them and uh, take them on board, you know, because we can only we can only come at these things from, you know, I've been a JP for a long time, I've been around this organisation for a while, um, you know, and sometimes it's great to have, you know, a fresh perspective on stuff and uh, hear other people's ideas. So, um, and so, Pamela, do you have anything to add? No, no, okay. not with my toothache. Thank oh. you. <laughs> That's no good. All right. But All thank right. you, everybody, for coming. Yes, thank you. Thank you for attending. It's been great to see you on Zoom. Um, um, you know, so do do make use of, of your QJA membership, make use of us, and uh, we wish you all the best for your um hopefully your long journey as a, as a JP. So, um, and just remember, you know, that change on the, the traffic camera thing has come through and, um, but it's not until April. So uh, yeah, so that's a good thing to say. So again, thank you. And I wish you a good night and um, it's not raining at the moment. Yay. And uh, it's not windy and there's no cyclones coming. So I think we, so, all right. So good night, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Wendy.